Hello and welcome to my latest video. In this video I've got a surprise DIY kit that will require some soldering and I'm going to try and see if I can build it successfully. So let's have a look at what we have. Let's open the box. Okay. So I have a Atmel chip uh, and a seven segment display. So uh, I think I know what it is. It's a it's a DIY clock kit. Um, I believe this has got some alarm functionality as well. So let's have a quickly look at all the components and make sure that we have everything. Uh, there's some resistors, uh, some ceramic capacitors, um, what else? a crystal uh, oscillator, and so resistor pack caps for the momentary buttons let's put those aside that's the power terminal a buzzer okay. what else uh, yeah so those are the switches uh, this is the transistor capacitor and then okay. I think what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with uh, placing most of the components in there um, and then I can solder them in one go. Uh, hopefully that will speed things up a bit. Okay. Let's see where the capacitor goes. Yeah. So got to be careful about the polarity on the capacitor uh, and let's put the resistors in these are straightforward no polarity required or don't have any polarity let's place them in let's put the other resistor in as well crystal oscillator in I think it's a 12 megahertz and I think just to place uh, hold things in place I'm going to use some tack uh, that way when I turn the PCB upside down I'm, they're not going to fall uh, and it makes soldering a lot easier so I'm going to do that for all the components uh, and it allows me to have straight pins as well uh, rather than bending them when soldering so it'll be nice and neat when I cut them off the buzzer in and uh, again need to make sure the polarity on the button is correct there's some more tack hold that in place buttons in place again with the buttons you gotta be careful uh, put them in the right way they actually only go in the one way but uh, it's still important to make sure you put them in the right way because two of the pins are shorted by default um, and if you get them in the wrong way uh, the circuit's not gonna work it's gonna be as if the button is uh, permanently pressed second button in I'm just checking I'm gonna get it right as I say measure twice cut once I always get confused about them so I just need to kind of remind myself Ease them in. There you go. Okay, 
That's good. Well, let's, uh, let's look at the ceramic capacitor. There's two different types of ceramic capacitors. There's a one larger one, I think it's 103, and the other are the same. So I'm going to make sure I put the right ones in the right place. The label on the PCB, so it's pretty obvious. And uh, with the ceramic capacitors, there's no polarity, so you can, you know, you don't need to worry about which way around you put it. Um, yeah, I almost put that in the wrong place. There you go. And then let's just use some tack to hold them in place as well. the last one the bigger one again there's no polarity so it can go in anywhere so put that in so that it's holding the buzzer as well which is a large component it's one of the larger components finally slide this in so again with this one there is a polarity so if you very carefully look there's a dot on this end and that aligns uh, with a marking on the PCB. So I don't know whether you can see that very well, but you should see that. And then there is this marking on the PCB. It's like a notch or a square um, shape. Let's use some tack to hold this in place as well. my soldering iron on so it's ready when I am ready to solder okay. not much else left just the power plug and the I see so let's see if I can actually get this right let's see if I can uh, use this holder because it will make it easier for me so place it in there it's not perfect but it's okay I could have used the other one, but it's okay for now. So now I can start soldering. Get my iron. All I need to do is what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder at least one pin of each of the components so that I can turn it over, make sure everything is good, um, and then I can either leave or remove the tag since the components will be kind of in place so just need to make sure that I get at least one of the pins for each component so that it holds it in place Now let's turn it over and remove the tack. Um, make sure that all the components are placed as they should be, they have moved. So let's quickly do that. Just gonna inspect the components, fix anything that needs to be fixed. And then I'm gonna move on to uh, solving the rest of the connectors. Now the components are in place. Okay, let's do that.
so now with all that soldering done i need to trim all the wires uh, flush as flush as possible to the pcb i'm gonna quickly do that Okay, with that done, now I can just inspect the PCB, make sure I've not missed anything. Have a visual inspection, make sure everything is clean. There's a couple of wires I need to trim a bit shorter, just to make it neat. That looks good, and touch up some of the joints, uh, take some excess um, solder away. Okay, that looks good. Next, so next, let's, <coughs> uh, let's put the power block on no polarity. So let's go to do that. So with that done, I can move on to the next component, which is the IC socket. And uh, there is a polarity to this or a direction to this. There's a notch on there, which lines up on a notch drawn on the PCB. That's nice. I went in quite nice and easy. So I'm going to put some tack, hold it in place, and, and then solder all of those. Okay, that's done. Let's uh, remove the tack. Make sure everything is good and the socket is well placed. So next, I'm going to install the seven-segment display. Make sure that lines up correctly. The dots at the bottom, the decimals on the bottom, basically line up with the PCB. Again, use some tack. Hold it in place, and then solder all the pins for that. This is, uh, Okay, let's just do that. Okay, with that last component done, now I just need to trim all the extra wires. Kind of trim them as close as to the PCB as possible without damaging the soldering. Just a quick inspection and touch up just to make sure all the nice solar joints are nice, no excess uh, solar. So looking good. So just check everything again. Make sure I've not missed anything. Everything looks good. So I'll try and test it now. Ah, first I need to get the chip in. So with the chip, I need to bend the legs inwards to make sure they actually go into the socket nice and easily. Otherwise, I'm going to end up bending the pins and damaging the pins and uh, making the chip useless. So let's just match the notch and push it in and get it the right way around and really just a soft pressure not too much because if it doesn't go in easily uh, it's going to end up damaging the pins oh, that's that's good they just slid in nicely but still firm still in a nice contact okay that's good so 
let's uh, power it up. So let's try and connect these pins. So I tried to connect the pins, but I got the wrong screwdriver. So I'm just going to try and power it, uh, turn my power supply on to five volts and try and power this on. To So I got myself the right screwdriver so now I can connect the pins correctly. So hopefully I should get this working. Let's just do that. So let's turn the power supply on, see if it works. Mm. Still not working. switch the power supply off also I inspect this and see if I can find an issue I think I see some dry solder joints so I'm just gonna go over them again uh, and just touch up anything that seems a possible issue and then I'm gonna try again Okay, let's turn the power supply on again and see if it works. Oh, bingo. So I think that's what it was. It was just some dry joints. Um, the buttons work. So that's it. That's uh, all I have for this. It's uh, working as it should. Thank you for watching um, and hope you found this video useful and uh, look forward to seeing you in my next video thank you goodbye